Welcome to another Gray Matter Community Webinar, this time AI and Privacy, featuring Ingvi from Kin. Hope you enjoy. Awesome. <laughs> All right. So, guys, we are here with Ingvi Carson, a co-founder and CGO of Kin, one of the hottest projects here on the AI, uh, first on the AI side, both community and tech-related. Uh, Ingvi, I might say that I'm very, very impressed by, I mean, Kin's effort in the space. I mean, for me, it's a huge deal on privacy and also congrats on the new feature that you guys got on um, there's an AI tool for that. That was super awesome. And yeah, uh, uh, very much thank you for being here today with us. Um, it's going to be an amazing session. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Sean. Yeah, that feature with the, there's an AI for that. That I think we got six, 700 likes on LinkedIn. Uh, yeah, that, was, so that was pretty cool. And awesome. I think now we're number one tool for January and number one under the category of personal development and it's it's increasing so so it's pretty cool also taking into account that we haven't launched a full product yet like it's a rolling beta and we've let only like I think it's four or five hundred people in and we have a long wait list mm -hmm. so it's a slowly we're, we're onboarding more and more people and opening up hopefully soon hopefully Ah, um want to make sure that it's ready you saw the, so, yeah. the dish that i made right the bolognese <laughs> i mean yeah yeah, yeah. yeah that was super that was cool, cool super nice conversation i need to change uh, like send over like more print screens from what i have been doing with kin that has been just super impressive but okay i'm curious i am yeah, it's it's a uh, the next thing that's being released here soon is um the ability for Kin also to actively engage with you, like remind you of something that you've said. Yes. And um, we're building in a journey where you can train your Kin to know you in a, in a fast and structured and easy way. So you don't have to think of everything in the conversational window, but you can go through some specialized design flow that both goes toward, okay, so what's important to you going forward in your life, something on now like it came to understand you now your values your personality your profile and also understand your past and your interest and all this and the people in your life so it, we're doing a ton of stuff and maybe one of the most cool interesting and cool stuff that we're working on at the moment is what we call episodic memory so and episodic memory is that's related is, to the brain feature. Oh, I sorry. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a that's a timeline basically. So the way you have memory with AI is is um, when you use GPT, like it has a it only remembers your context window, and uh, then you can have memory on the side. And what you usually do when you want to work with memory is you basically take save all the historic chats and put them into a vector database mm -hmm. and every time you do something like you ask the ai to go through the all the past conversations and that's really not an efficient way because if you mention something let's say two thousand times like it it's going to take a long time for for it to figure out uh, what information it should use and this likelihood of it uh, making it uh, wrong is extremely high over time so we're doing it in a completely different way that very few uh, people are, are doing. Anyways, I'll, I'll just uh, go quickly through uh, this uh, presentation. I'm going to test it out on you guys. So if you get any comments and feedback, if, you, if there's something you think that, okay, I understood that, or I didn't understand that, mm -hmm. or I think this would have been a better approach, then I would love to, to hear that. Awesome. Um, so, yeah, not many people have seen this presentation, so it's, uh, it's pretty cool. But I, I hope it's pretty cool. Sorry. Um, so, so yeah, Kin, the way we communicate it to internal events. This is not a marketing se uh, sentence. That Kin is an AI companion. What's different with Kin and so much other things is, is, of course, the memory feature, the privacy feature, and then the ability... The Kin will have to form a U as its own. That's why it's extremely important that you can trust Kin, that no one else but you 
can see the data that's inside your kit. There's no developer on our team. Even if it knocks on our door, we can never get access to your data. So the way we position this is as a companion. We're going to focus on, we're, we are focusing on building a companion that serves a purpose within the personal development space. Wait a second. I'm Maybe you all here know that you're now expected at a younger age. Yeah, Sean? Uh, I think I'm getting some no, collective issues. Just let me uh, mute myself, uh, continue on. I'm hearing you. I just think for my side could be a little bit trouble. Just a second, but you can go on. So we're looking into this thing that you can say that already when you're 14 years old or 15 years old, you're expected to balance dual identities, being global uh, and uh, local at the same time, managing digital communities, social media, and everything you have from where you live. We've never seen anxiety levels and loneliness levels be this high. And the access to professional coaches is extremely scarce and it's expensive. And it seems that it's only getting more and more expensive. So what we're building with Kin is a new type of companion. Um, and we're combining like three things, the good things from a life coach, which is someone who would quickly understand you have some frameworks for how to guide you and will keep what you say confidential. Combining that with the ability to be a supporting friend that listens and affirms you with the power of Gen AI. And this is really like, that's that mix is really I think, quite powerful. Yeah, I think that is like uh, one of like the, the approaches that is like really, really, as you guys say, uh, personal AI. I think it's like a next step from what we can see from ChatGPT because uh, the, the whole memory stuff is where the, the magic is really is. I mean, besides the privacy, but I think like just the ability to relate yourself with an AI model in a brand new way is like, I only see that in Kin, so <laughs> you, you guys are really rocking it like, on that side. It's, it's really impressive. Yeah. I think that's why the results are so, so impressive so far. The adoption, the reviews as well, is super, super cool. Yeah, thank, yeah, thanks. And then, I mean, I remember f f for myself, uh, like a few months ago, I was, uh, I was driving home from, uh, from work and I started to get an anxiety attack. Mm -hmm. And I've, ne I've never had that before. Like I've never had an anxiety. I've been stressed and pressured, but physical symptoms of an anxiety attack, I've never experienced that before. Yeah, they're horrible. I, I have I, that quite, yeah. quite often actually. <laughs> Oh yeah, I'm, I'm sorry to hear. It's, it's it, but it is horrible. Like I, I, it, I didn't know what to do because I've never, I've never had it before. I, you might be trained by now, but it's a uh, so. But I like this shortness of breath. I, I had to pull over and I texted my coach. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm, I have mm -hmm. my own mental coach. I meet with him every two weeks. Nice. We chat over Signal. Yeah. We keep each other mm -hmm. uh, like engaged. So I reach out to my coach. He doesn't respond. Damn. I call him. He doesn't pick up. And I had, I was, I, of course I did a Google search and I found something. Okay. Do some breath work and, and, and so on. And I spent a few hours on trying to do some deep breaths. So just this mere fact that having somebody that is available for you if you get a mental breakdown down 2 a.m. in the morning, that's patient and doesn't judge you, whatever you have on your mind. That's something that we need now. So that's where kin comes into the picture here. Like it is really your AI, it's your yes. kin. Yes. And it's something you can use for your private thoughts and your private lives. It's not, a, it's not up to us to judge you what you 
right mm -hmm. and I get, it all, we don't care about it it's yours it's your thoughts mm -hmm. it's your problem like it's not ours then yeah to show kin those of you who haven't seen it yet that maybe all of you are on the beta if not um, like just uh, sign up and let Kenji know who's here in the, the audience and he'll fast track you yeah. <laughs> but yeah you'll get, you'll get a, a private chat with Kim as an example here like uh, navigating okay is my yeah is my co is my co-founder put my name in on this but it was actually not anyways um, <laughs> so yeah like okay I lend somebody money but they haven't paid it back how should I approach this that's one way um, so you, you, add, you have a private chat you can use the inspirational prompts or guidance that will be in there. Kin is built with the long-term memory, so it will remember what you tell it, also why privacy matters, and it can put this into relations. Then you have data control, and uh, this screen here actually just shows that okay, you should you should notice this in the middle where it says user DID, mm -hmm. and if you care about some of you probably know about blockchains, but you can see, see that it says ETH here, right? Yeah, so and, uh, address. it's a decentralized identifier. That is the proof that it's encrypted with private keys that you hold. Nice, nice, um, nice. Yeah. Some of the things that you can use Kin for can help you navigate tricky situations. So this is, a, this, this, this can be awkward moments, it can be difficult conversations, it can be asking for a raise, be talking to your neighbor about a problem mm -hmm. and knowing what to say if somebody constantly does something or if you clashed with a coworker uh, on the job. So having somebody to guide you on navigating these things, you'll have a safe, you can have, you, you can use it as a safe space to vent, just to express how you feel without being judged. You can use it to get your mental clarity and kind of straighten your mind to see, okay, how should I approach this? How do I improve my idea or my, my, my output? And then you could also use it for personalized coaching, get advice from Kin, learn how to communicate, understand perspectives, help get Kin to help you relate to yourself or relate to others. Right. So, so those are some of the use cases that you could use it for among a lot of different ones, but to give a feel that is within this personal development space that I we're mean, really focusing. I mean, the possibilities are like almost infinite. Like, I, I really enjoy how it's even like developing wise, right? So I was like even chatting with Kim and I was like, I really wish you, you could like see what I'm, I'm like seeing right now. Uh, like uploading photos have like computer vision attached to it. So like even with further development, I think the possibilities will be like almost infinite, right? Like uh, getting advice because it knows you really well, right? So yeah, that's super, yeah, it, super awesome. <laughs> it will. And, and for future features, I think I have some here I, I brought with me that we are working on app integrations. We are working on voice, text to speech, and that you can use it both on your computer and on your phone without risking convenience and without risking your data. Mm -hmm. And that's, uh, that's a different thing. Uh, there's somebody who has an idea. Well, um, which sure of, uh, yeah, and okay, I'll go. Okay, I'm gonna be very brief on, on the technical side, but the way we approach this privacy-wise is with the local first approach. So right now, all your data is stored on your device. We use edge uh, computing or edge machine learning, well, as much as we can now, we'll use that more and more in the future. So that just means that a lot of the computation that's happening with Kin happens directly on your phone because you have such a powerful device on your phone. And that's not something that, let's say, ChatGPT can do because they don't store your data on your device, so they can't do computation on your device. They will have to rely on the cloud, which also makes it more costly for them. So for us, doing that on device makes it so that we can make a cheaper product. Um, we use uh, self-sovereign identity. This is the decentralized identifier from the beginning. Private keys, doesn't matter what the details are, we'll always go into that. And then memory is, the, is one of the key features. The way we build memory seems to be quite unique. Uh, right. I uh, think, yeah. Uh, 
Uh, I see that Enigmas uh, said something. Enigmas, do you want to come on the stage later on to, to share the idea uh, before the chat? One thing that I was looking forward to ask you also, Ingve, because like your co-founder, uh, I mean, before Keen, uh, I mean, was already on development hyphen, where the idea of just building this type of technology where we were at in 2022, in comparison, if you see uh, JetGPT arising, as a thing on the mainstream side. When did you and your partners came up together and said like, let's revolutionize the way people interact with AI? Because uh, at least from my side, the point that I view that is AI, uh, at least nowadays is seen as something very business related, uh, analysis of data and just trying to understand a little bit more uh, how uh, people can interact with technology in a more personal way and where did that idea came from, right? So. I mean, it, that is do you know why? Do you know? Yeah, do you know why? It's a good question, and I, I like that. There's a story behind it. But there's a main reason why everyone is focusing on doing customer service, support, productivity stuff. Like, there's a very, very good explanation for this, mm -hmm. and it's because of return on investment. Of course, building like memory and own models is extremely expensive and takes a long time. And if you're, if you are a huge player in this space, like you need to deliver some return to your investors to get yes. more funding or something like that. You don't have the resources to do this kind of uh, R&D. That's, uh, that's not how money is being prioritized. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the, the, the reasons that we focus on, the entire industry focused on the pro productivity side. Uh, so short-term goals instead of like long-term uh, benefits. That said, the story on this, actually a year ago, exactly a year ago today, actually, I thought we we're going to close down the company. Okay. And why? So We've been building. Yeah. So I've been entrepreneur for 20 years. Mm -hmm. I have uh, sold two businesses. I've been in venture capital for six years. Right. And uh, two and a half year ago, I thought the timing was just right to build something. I've always, always dreamt of building. And that's something that gives you as an individual, as a person, back the control over everything that is identity defining about you. Yes. All your data, all your behavior, everything you do, you produce some sort of data that so many people will monetize or abuse in order to get you to do something. I believe so strongly in private property rights that like I've wanted this for a long time. United Nation, I believe in 2021, did, a, did something on cognitive warfare that you'll start seeing nations trying to get into the brains mm -hmm. of other nations, citizens, like slowly, there's nothing you can really do about it. If, yeah. if, and it'll take a long time. It's kind of the bo boiling frog problem. So the dream is, is, is old. And I've been in the blockchain space for 12 years, I believe. So I really believe strongly in this, but a year ago, I thought we're closing down the business because we built a technology that could hold all your data. And you could connect your wallet into something and X, Y, and Z, mm -hmm. but we hadn't made it useful. And that's when we started looking into AI and I said, okay, the technology that we built on this privacy and data ownership side, what if we used AI to be the component that produced value for the individual so that every time you interact with kin, you actually store your own data and your own thoughts into Kin, but it's yours and you engage with it. So you get value out of your own data. Mm -hmm. And if that can then grow big enough, like that can be catered to certain other types of experiences, personalization, monetization, whatever you want to do with it later on. But we need a lot of people to own their own data before businesses start to care about that. So we built the hypothesis a year ago. We spent three months on validating if it would be possible to build. Right. We got some funding 
And uh, we now spent eight months on building this uh, beta. Well, not eight months on building it, but uh, four or five months on building the beta. But uh, we spent years on figuring out how to do it. So that's kind of the story on this. And um, yeah, I can talk a lot about uh, the future of what we have planned, but I'll, I'll just move a little bit on here. Sure, sure. Uh, but I appreciate one of the, the, the reply. Yeah. I appreciate it very much. I mean, I'm very interested about like how uh, business are shaped and like mostly with Kim because of the whole background and just like seeing the tech now deployed and with the demo is so important to just have this general knowledge of around that. That's, that's really impressive. And I, I really enjoy the team that you're building. Very capable team. Congrats on it as well. Appreciate that. And I think that uh, what we hope is that so I think that the AI space or I know that it will be pretty big. Yeah. <laughs> right now it's around an, an $18 billion market mm -hmm. and it looks like it will go to a more than $400 billion market within the next eight years. Right. Yeah. I, it's just so crazy that, to see the fun. potential on like, every side of tech. I, I know that I'm going like on a side note here, but like, just seeing other markets, how they are uh, just growing exponentially. You can see even the health tech market, how uh, like it will double its size by 2027 as a prediction. So it, uh, and that's the thing, right? It's a huge market. You can capitalize a lot on it. But like even though major comp corporations that have like most of the funding, like OpenAI or just Perplexity, for instance, every person who tests Kin just knows it's different. So it's just a matter of time to just uh, like, of course, getting feedback from the beta, but becoming one of the big players inside of that market, shaping up the future of AI together with, with people. I think that's the most important thing, just changing the way that corporations say that we need to relate with AI. So uh, you can see OpenAI just uh, saying that we should use uh, for different use cases than what your team is envisioning. And I think it's so important to open that debate for the space in order to really uh, get the best out of the technology, you know? Yeah, you're completely right, and um, I mean, it would be kind of uh, ignorant of us if we are trying to compete with ChatGPT because we cannot; they're too big. And but what they're focusing is on the productivity side yeah. and business side. 100%. We're focusing on the purpose side, and um, well, that but that ha that really matters. And I, I would say, okay, as you see in this slide, what we believe is, in order for AI to be uh, trusted, you must control it. And in order to be able to control it, you need to provide the data. And I think that it's a prerequisite that you have full privacy in there. Yeah. I and that will unlock the trust and the possibility of you having a personal AI. So if Bill Gates is right, then everyone will have a, own a personal AI within five years, if he's right. That means that personal AI will become your most valuable digital asset ever. You'll be forced to have one I and it so. will know everything about you. And that means that it has to transcend ecosystems. It cannot be kept in the walled gardens of big tech or governments. It must ultimately be owned by its user. Our good old friend, Elon, I love this clip. Like he was being interviewed with Rishi Sunak. Rishi Sunak. This is 52 seconds. If I play this, would you be able to hear the sound? I think so. Uh, play it. Let, let's check it. Okay, it's, it, this is 52 seconds and I love it. Bill Gates said, there is no one in our time who has done more to push the bounds of science innovation than you. That's what I would say. Yeah, well, that's it. Nice thing to have anyone say about you. Nice coming from Bill Gates. But oddly enough, when it comes to AI, actually, for around a decade, you've almost been in the opposite and saying, hang on, yeah. we need to think about what we're doing and what we're pushing here and what do we do to make this safe and, and yeah. maybe we should be pushing this faster and as hard as we are. Like, I mean, you've been doing it for a decade. Like, what was it that caused you to think about it that way and you know, why do we need to be worried? Yeah, I've been somewhat of a Cassandra for quite a while. Where people, where people would, I would tell people, like, we should really be concerned about AI. And be like, what are you talking about? Like, I've never really had any experience with, with it. I mean, it, since I was immersed in technology, I have been immersed in technology for a long time, I can see it coming. So, but I think this year was, there have been a number of breakthroughs. I mean, 
you know, point where someone can see a dynamically created video of themselves. You know, like it's starting to make a video of yours. Yeah, it didn't start on the clip because I thought that was a bit weird. Um, so actually, I apologize for that. No, that was no not worries. The clip. I remember you sent it over. It just describes yeah. him perfectly, okay. like, right? So what? So what he says, Elon? I thought it started from the clip. I apologize for that. But what he says is. <laughs> uh, like, don't turn off my friend. Like, if organizations have the same power as the old Twitter had, uh, like, they're going to shut it down. For real. Don't shut off my friend. And I just loved him saying that, and that's going to be one of the biggest risks out there. All right. So that's the thing. Who should control your uh, personal AI? Big Take is incentivized to create engagement and monetize data. And you're going to, like, you don't have any choice like it's it's not like you're gonna say i'm not gonna use instagram because of privacy concerns like that's not how it works like you use it because like what is the alternative and uh, so you cannot care about it and uh, but they will monetize it and they will control it if they get the chance and then the other thing is governments i don't know what i know i don't know about you but just imagine the power from a governmental side on an election year. Yeah. I mean, that's, I don't know, man. I'd say, like, there was a lot on uh, the social dilemma and mm -hmm. uh, and uh, this um, uh, Cambridge Analytica stuff with Trump. I don't know. I, I don't think uh, that government's controlling your personal data and AI. I'm not sure that uh, that's a good idea. Uh, so, and I think it's really good to file, like, censorship, for instance. <laughs> I mean, uh, just makes yeah. a lot of sense to see uh, the way that the privacy part and like uh, just governments not being able to uh, access your data or your like check history, you know, uh, can change the way a population behaves with like governments with high censorship or stuff like that. I just think, uh, and, and one thing that I would like to ask you, um, how's the, for instance, the availability of just, just, increase I just the, all oh, sorry, sound here, just a second. There you go. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. I just lost the, uh, I had to go on my phone here. There's something wrong. Okay. But I didn't hear your last question. Oh, yes. So I was just talking about like, uh, it's really interesting to see how this could be used for like uh, fighting censorship, for instance, in like governments that, uh, I mean, people will control your data and just like have access to your information. I, I mean, it takes a huge part as well in the whole, uh, I mean, privacy part, I think that could take a huge role in just like smaller governments. That's why I wanted Nick to be here. I messaged him right now. He's doing a really nice project in small nations in the Caribbean. And uh, I mean, a lot of them pass through a lot of government censorship. So, I mean, it's just really interesting how, it, as you said, like who is going to be shaping it? Governments, uh, big corporations. I think uh, what should be shaping AI and its future are its users, right? So, I mean, uh, it's not up to a higher order, um, I, know, I don't know, um, a chief of state or even uh, a, <laughs> a chief executive officer from a big tech to define what AI future will be. But I think will be, uh, I mean, uh, human beings overall, how we uh, relate with technology. Uh, I, I just think uh, it's really interesting to take you guys are having on it because that's the way I envision the future of AI as well. So what I'm tr trying to do with this space too so it's just like um, a really interesting takeaway on, on, on how we should uh, approach AI and develop uh, AI itself. So this is super awesome. Yeah, yeah I think, yeah, I think I, it, the, my, like if I should boil down my, my mission in, in, in one word, it would be self-sovereignty. Yeah. Like, so that means o open source, means community, you control you, you own you and all this. So I, I, I do believe that it should not be governmental controlled or it should not be big tech controlled, but having stuff being open sourced, being open, like also with Kim, like if somebody kind of, uh, I don't know, bombs us or anything like that, like that shouldn't affect you, Kim. It's yours. So it needs to be built in a way that even if we didn't exist, like you could still have it and control it. So.
So yeah, that's that. I'm uh, gonna be in my car for uh, for a while here uh, while. We... Mm. Sorry, I think we lost you. Uh, so yeah, I remember Enigmas had a question. Enigmas, uh, feel free to to ask your question. You want to join the stage? Uh, does anyone have any sort of questions? Yeah, I can see here. Kenji, should I request to speak? Welcome to the stage, Kenji. Also, Enigmas, it's up to you. If you want to talk on the stage, feel free to do Hello. so, or you can write in the chat. Also, uh, hey Kenji, welcome, welcome. How are you doing, friend? All good, all good. How are you? Uh, good too, I think uh, Envy is. A, I, I uh, he told me he, he he I think he was going to be in his car or something, so he, he can't talk right now. All right, all right. But uh, yeah, do we have more questions? I can also have to pick it up and um, take it take it over while he he can talk. Yeah, I think Enigma says one. Uh, let's let's check his. Also, Hyde, if you have any questions, I know that you are. Uh, and just got to know Kim, so uh, it's really cool that you showed interest as well. I mean, they are open for the beta. If you have any sort of questions, hi, feel free to hop in here on the stage or just write it down and we can answer through here. Um, but yeah, thank you, Elon Dine. This has been super neat, uh, super neat. Thank you to the whole Kim team for this. Yeah, I mean, I appreciate it very much, the collaboration, Kenji. Uh, also, just having the yeah, opportunity thank to- thank you, Elon Dine. From Much appreciated Envy words. Is just super, super awesome. And I mean, uh, I just very much enjoy how you guys are evolving into the space. I mean, it's just super, super neat. I see Ingvi here. Ingvi, I'm going to invite you to speak. Yep. Awesome. Uh, so, uh, Enigmas yeah, I, is no, I Enigmas I will then. also invite you to the stage if you want to if you wanna speak. Yeah. I, by the way, I, I, I lost all sound uh, for the past like minute or so. Yes, yeah, so I don't know if there was anything there when Kenji got up. So yeah, uh, so Kenji, uh, I I have some questions here. First from Flo. Flo said, "What types of coaching methodologies does Kim know? There are many coaching methods, and it will be interesting to be able." Uh, Jean, to... wait, wait. Can you hear your English? Did you hear what he said? Uh, yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah. He said he. he ah, lost. okay, good. No, no worries. So, uh, so I. Sorry, go ahead with the question. Sorry. Yeah, so Flo has this question. What type of coaching methodologies does King know? There are many coaching methods and it would be interesting to be able to choose certain methodologies or styles. So yeah, pretty interesting question uh, regarding yeah. coaching. Yeah, I have, I have an answer for that, of course. Um, yeah, so it's very important to say that King will not be making up any coaching techniques we rely on. So undocumented fields. I don't think that it's our place to decide what specific question should be invented. Um, so obviously we're going to use some well-established, we're going to offer some well-established uh, frameworks that are already there. So everything from goal setting theory to CPT. Um, and there, there are, uh, yeah, so there are a lot of things from positive psychology, from Jungian psychology right. that will be used both to define values, to personality, temperament, strengths, interests, um, and guidance. So, so yeah, there will be frameworks and as personalized as possible. One of my dreams is to make it possible for you to select your own mm -hmm. mental models and uh, yeah, and change the ones that you have. We can have some default ones, but then you can change it to what you want to have. Awesome, awesome. Also, Enigmas just uh, made a question here. Uh, I have a question. Speaking of privacy, I just want to know something. What is the privacy feature that actually stands out from the rest of the other AI platforms? Uh, <laughs> I think that will be a really nice <laughs> one. <laughs> but it's mostly self uh, oh, well, yeah. Go uh, it's very simple. We're the only we the only one who has privacy. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of, it's kind of, the kind of, I can go into details why we have a unique type of privacy also, but it can get extremely confusing when trying to explain it. But there are some things that you would take for granted. So, so just imagine this. When you use uh, something on your phone, like think of a, I don't know, Google Drive or whatever, like you use something on your phone, your, your notes, mm -hmm. and then when you come to your computer, you would, you would, and 
expect it to be available on your computer, synchronized. But that's something we take for granted. And um, doing that while maintaining privacy is very, like, it's basically impossible. And uh, we have a way to do that. Like, so that's, uh, that is in the roadmap as well. And that's what makes it extremely unique. Uh, so yeah, and other things as well. But having all your data being encrypted with private keys that you don't need to worry about, and at the same time being able to synchronize your data across devices, that's uh, that's pretty unique. Yeah, uh, Elodine just says some really cool things about privacy. Elodine, feel free to uh, join the the stage as well if you if you want to. Just give your takeaways on either Keen or uh, privacy as well. Uh, privacy is established by handling a local database such as Dexy, which pins information to the user's browser. This means keys are stored locally and not in, with the host. This is inherently more safe and what individuals like myself run alongside Kin. If a database is breached by a company, thousands of keys are lost. If you are breached, a key is lost. Uh, I mean, Alodan, you're, you're completely right. Uh, that's something r really, really cool. Uh, if you want to join us also, Elodine, uh, feel free to no. tell a little bit about your projects as well to Envy. I mean, it's just a pleasure to have you here with us today. Yeah, but, yeah just a comment on that in, in that in sense that if you want, you need to still have compute as well. Um, and so the way we, we're going to store the, the data on, on cloud will still be with your data encrypted with your private keys. Mm -hmm. And it will be on multiple different servers it can be as many as you want and it synchronizes uh, but everything encrypted with private keys so if you can hack the private keys like we don't store them we don't even know we cannot even connect you to your decentralized identifier mm -hmm. so if uh, your private keys get hacked i mean then there's a very good hacker like the likelihood of that being hacked is basically zero unless you hand it over to somebody uh, directly uh, so that's that, and I think the key here is the way we store is something called decentralized web nodes. Like, mm -hmm. I think you should check that out. That's pretty cool. Pretty cool. And then for computation, so we com compute locally uh, as much, and then we're going to do cloud computing. We have access to some confidential computing with our partnership with uh, with the Azure, and then we store decentralized. We store uh, the, your personal knowledge graphs on a trusted execution environment that is again encrypted with your private keys that uh, that also comes with an attestation on what goes on in your trusted ex trusted environment down to a chip level so even on a hardware level it will be encrypted and if um, if something is stored at, uh, at aws like for instance many blockchains are stored at mm -hmm. uh, then and that and aws gets bombed it doesn't really matter. I mean, it's a, then it just synchronizes with the local version you have on your phone or your desktop or in your basement or at your Microsoft uh, Azure server. So that's uh, that's one of the, the ways that we, we work with it. So if I am hearing this correctly, you guys are doing a mix of local, like in browser or on device storage, and then a mix of cloud. So that if cloud or any kind of service happens to drop, that the database basically falls back to whatever's on the device. Is that correct? Yeah, is it worth like uh, kind of a mesh technology? So, so your, your kin would connect to the database that, is, that it's closest to. So if you're on device, then you will use your on device first. If you're on uh, on a web app, then it will uh, use either your uh, local or your computer or you know, on, on, in cloud, yeah. And if one of them doesn't work, you'll just take the next one, uh, the next, uh, as, close to, as long as we also have one in cloud. Can I ask if you guys have any future plans for making things 100% local in terms of data storage? I know encryption is a hell of a drug when it comes to mm -hmm. keeping things safe, but there are some individuals who wouldn't even like their information uh, stored in places like, like that. So I'm wondering if you have a way in the future to tackle that. Well, sure. Like you're, you're not forced to use the, the decentralized web nodes. So right now, everything is 100% stored locally. Uh, so that's what we have. And if you want the encrypted storage with synchronization and have it and also use uh, the cloud computing, 
in a private privacy preserving manner. I mean, yeah, we will we'll just offer that as a service. So, so by default, it's local first, and you can just keep it there and use edge computing. Okay, okay. So, so yeah. I'm, I'm sorry for all the questions. That, I'm just trying to get some. Don't, don't worry about it. Yeah. So, so basically, the default service is entirely local, and then you can go ahead and upgrade to have this backup. Is that correct? I, I'm I'm sorry for prodding you with so many questions about this. Um, no, yeah. So, um, yeah. So right now, we haven't done the agent in the cloud. Like that's not completed. Like you can imagine when when doing it in a way that you should be able to trust. If you could trust a blockchain, you should be able to trust this. Like your blockchain is also stored in the cloud, it's not stored on your device. And um, it's a, so if you can trust that, you should be able to trust this. And building it in that way, it's, it takes time. Uh, but that will be there. So yeah, you can you can opt in to have that, but if, and if, but if you only want to have things uh, locally on device or in physical note form, like you are free to do that. But yeah, so that's just completely. Uh, that you have to upgrade your kin, or is just something you toggle. But it's up to you. It should be up to you to decide. I appreciate the clarification. Thank you so much. Awesome. Thanks for the question. Yeah, and I think one thing, like we really, we really value like privacy and self sovereignty. That doesn't mean that we want to uh, limit your options so you, it's still okay to share data as long as to share data as long as you decide who to share it with and when and that you can take it back again uh, so we're using both zero knowledge proofs for this uh, and verifiable credentials to do verifiable interactions and handle stuff like your passport your driver's license and so on uh, in a uh, to get graph solid way Awesome. I just have one more question sure. and then I'm going to get off the stage because um, these no things are sometimes tied hand in hand. What is uh, Kin's policy on data sales regarding that? So uh, is, is all of that data that may be stored in the cloud, is that going to be protected from sales? Yeah, it's, it's technically impossible. I, you're the only one who has access to it. So it's, it's technically impossible for us to sell that data. Okay. There's simply uh, no way. Oh, so uh, I'm trying to think of how to put this in it. I'm not trying to be confrontational. So I'm so very sorry if this comes off that way. Um, uh, it, when, no, it doesn't, it doesn't, messages... not at all. I appreciate it. <laughs> when messages are passed through our servers, we we don't collect them, but we could have the ability to cache and store those interactions between the AI and the user because at the end of the day, they still have to, to hook up to a model that is using our web service, right? What I'm asking specifically is, is if any data is being aggregated on the site for sale, period, dot. It doesn't matter where it's coming from. I'm just curious if there's anything like that involved with Ken. Nope. We're not selling any at all, and we also use encryption in transit. And when we work with data integrations, we have a zero trust data, yeah, and we have a zero trust data bridge for that. Our business is not your data; that's yours. And I, I'm really our glad business to hear that. Is, is a service. Yeah, so that's um, uh, not even now. If you have access to Kin, I can even if you used your email to sign up, your email is not connected to Kin. I have no idea. Uh, we are we only use that to send you an invite and if you use your phone number to generate your private keys we don't have access to that either so that's handled with magic link to issue private keys so it's uh, it's it could have been like an uh, an inch more secure if we asked you to print out generate a seed phrase and print it out and put it in the safe well that's just not really convenient using magic link for that is 99 by 999 percent as uh, secure probably more secure because then you don't re rely on human error for for uh, handling seed phrases and uh, yeah so so we we absolutely have no access to any of your data at any point 
what we can ask for is we can ask for your data and you will then have to sign and approve that we get access to it. And then like, you would be able to see that if you want it, but you will have to sign it. And um, yeah, and, if, and we can ask to, we can get, yeah, we can, yeah, we can ask for, for things from you. That's, that's what we can. Um, but yeah, we cannot steal it from you. Awesome. She just sent a, a heart right. here on the chat. Uh, also, Ingvi, uh, Fantastic. I don't know how is your time schedule, yeah. but uh, I, I just have one. I, I need, okay, last question, because I need to go. I'm outside of the, my son's kindergarten, so I have oh. to get it. Oh, no, no worries then. <laughs> it was just about uh, future plans, but uh, we can check that oh, yeah. on, on, our, on our roadmap. Yeah, I can say just very shortly, future plans. I mean, we're going to have text-to-speech. We're going to have data integrations, all this very soon. We're going to have onboarding journeys where you can... Uh, start building up your profile and uh, get, uh, teaching Ken a lot of stuff about yourself and a ton of other things. So, yeah, and um, that's it, guys. I gotta go. Let's go. Appreciate uh, so much your time you and, your, so and I really also appreciate your your uh, your questions. Uh, like, I really do. And um, Kenji, uh, maybe he's here for another a few minutes if you have more questions. Take care. Thanks, okay, guys. MV, thank you so much. Have an amazing day. Thank you. Uh, all right, all thank right. You, uh, so, uh, I, don't know. I don't know many technical details, I think, but if anyone has any question, I can try to help. Sure. I see that Enigmas is typing, uh, but he's not anymore. <laughs> so, yeah, um, I mean, I think we are, we are set then. Uh, guys, this is a recorded session. Uh, this will be uploaded on YouTube if you want to uh, see everything from it. If, uh, in case you miss it apart or you want to send it to some friends, feel free to do so. Uh, as soon as I upload this link to YouTube, it will be in the announcements channel. Uh, I appreciate very much the Kin team. Uh, if any of you don't have access to the beta, uh, just message Kenji and you will be able to test it out. Um, I see that Tactical AI here and Enigma's awesome Tactical, always welcome. Guys, thank you so much uh, for the time. Uh, Enigma's, I'll be wrapping it up, but if you got any questions, feel free to join Skin channel and uh, also just do some questions from there. Kenji, appreciate it. Everyone who attended the session. And yeah, let's go guys. Uh, really amazing time. In some great. hours we'll be having the event, me and Elodine around the community project that we are developing here in the, the space. This is the second week of the project. So yeah, let's just, <coughs> let's try to get this deployed uh, all the way up to February <laughs> and let's go. Hope to see you guys in some hours. Um, and yeah, uh, amazing time and quality session. Thank you everyone, bye bye.